This is one of my favorite pieces. The Voyager class. What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex, you, and you're watching The Road to TF5. This is web series where we talk about Transformers last night. This is episode number 119, and today we have a very, very exciting episode for you guys because this is when we see the official first look at the toys for Transformers last night. The toys have been revealed at New York Toy Fair 2017, which is happening right now, this weekend, as we speak. And so this is a pretty big episode. There's a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to get right into it. So the very first photo that I'd like to talk about is this image right here, Transformers Last Night. Here's the official poster that we've seen. Director Michael Bay, producer Lorenzo de Bonaventura, and here are the main stars. Mark Wahlberg, Anthony Hopkins, Laura Haddock, Isabella Moner, and Josh Duhamel. Pretty solid cast. I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing right now. Let's get into the toys. Now, what I'm going to talk about first is the gimmicky lines, and then we're going to go into the main lines, and then I'm going to tell you which ones I'm going to get. And just from looking at the images and the photos so far, I'm going to tell you that I'm pretty excited about this new line. So let's get right into it. Okay, so this is the Turbo Changers line, which is essentially like the one-step changers. And here we have Drift, Hound, Megatron, Optimus Prime, and um, that's about it. Um, beside it is... Um, the um, there's Hound and there's um, Grimlock and then there's another Megatron here and then beside that is the tiny turbo changers and of course on the left side is the radio controlled squeaks and uh, let's check out this photo um, here is Optimus Prime and Megatron and they actually look pretty nice but they're turbo changers so this is definitely not for me it's a little bit too simple for my tastes um, here's Hound, and Hound's a little bit different from what we're used to because we've seen a lot of photos where he's like this uh, military emergency response vehicle, and as a turbo changer, he's actually a mobile artillery. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. Uh, moving on, here's his robot mode, and right beside him, his Grimlock. Now, here's a different um, line, like another gimmicky line, and that is the All Spark Tech Cube power figures and what we have here is Drift, Optimus Prime, Barricade and Bumblebee and I don't exactly know how it works but all I gather right now just from these photos is that the chest opens up and then you can pop in this a cube, um, this cube that you see right here and I don't know really what it really does. I'm sure there's more information out there but it's not something that I'm too interested about so I'm not going to get into that. Uh, moving on, okay, so here's the package of Bumblebee for the AllSpark Tech. Um, hey, check this out. This is pretty cool. The helmets, the voice-changing helmets, and we've seen uh, Bumblebee, we've seen Optimus Prime, and now we're getting Megatron. And that's pretty cool because now we're actually getting a villain. We've been, you know, a lot of people have been wearing or own the Optimus Prime voice-changing helmet. That one's a very, very popular one. Now we actually get Megatron. So that's very, very cool. I'm curious to, what, to know what he's going to sound like. And here's Squeaks. Now that's pretty cool. We're getting more options for the voice-changing helmets. It's just going to be a little bit um, uh, difficult to cosplay if you want to use that as your actual uh, cosplay headpiece. <laughs> but the Megatron voice looks cool and I'm really curious to know what that's going to sound like. Uh, they have it attached to a like little mini speaker here. So if you, were at, if you were at Toy Fair, you would know what it sounds like. So now we're going to get into the main line. And we're going to start off with the main line with the Masterpiece series of Bumblebee. And this is a large, oh, sorry, not a larger but a, um, I guess a shrunken down version of the, um, of, the, uh, of the Masterpiece Bumblebee that we're used to seeing. The original Masterpiece Bumblebee was actually the, based off of the um, uh, uh, Revenge of the Fallen Camaro. And that was like a leader class uh, a Bumblebee for the Masterpiece. But this is something different. This is like a completely new mold. Um, this is smaller. And look at this. On the box, it actually says Hasbro and Takara Tomy. So that tells you that if you get the Takara Tomy version or the Hasbro version, it's actually the same thing. But this looks really, really nice for a, um, 
for another version of Bumblebee, I think it's actually pretty nice. I like the dark parts in uh, that go um, well with the yellow parts. And here's the vehicle mode. And um, I'm really, really liking it. So I definitely believe that this is something I will get. And it's nice to have different options because uh, Optimus, I'm sorry, Bumblebee did go through a number of changes as a uh, both a robot and a uh, mostly in the vehicle mode, of course. But it's nice to get this because this is the original, original Camaro from the 2007 movie. So very, very cool. Definitely going to get that. Um, now, this is the Legion class line. Now, there's a whole bunch of characters here. Um, uh, starting from left to right, we got Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, and... You know, I don't really know who that's supposed to be. I guess that's Grimlock. Um, here is that three-headed dragon, which we'll talk a little bit more later. Barricade, Megatron, Crosshairs, Drift, and Bumblebee. Um, here's some closer-up photos. And the Megatron looks pretty good, actually. I, I, I gotta admit, that's a pretty good-looking Megatron for a Legion class. Now, here is um, leader class toys. Now, there are three leader class toys. One of them is the Shadow Spark Optimus Prime that we saw. It's an Asia exclusive. But then here's the standard leader class Optimus Prime, which actually looks pretty good. I'm not sure if it's lighting or maybe it's just the, the way they repainted them. But this looks pretty cool. And then there's Megatron uh, in a box. I like the artwork on it. I like the CG rendered artwork on him. Beside him is a Voyager class Grimlock. I'm not going to talk a lot about that. It's essentially the Voyager class Grimlock from Age of Extinction, but just repainted to uh, more dull colors uh, like, you know, uh, dark gray, black and uh, silver. Not a whole lot going on there, but it is more movie accurate. But anyways, Voyager class Megatron. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on. I noticed that the box, like pretty much all the boxes say Premier Edition on them, and um, I guess it really doesn't mean anything at this point, just because they all are Premium Edition. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the Deluxe line. In the back, uh, we do have Hound, which is a Voyager class, but in front of them is the Deluxe class figures. We got Bumblebee, and it's really just the repainted version of the Age of Extinction uh, Camaro Bumblebee, but I really like this repainted version of Strafe. I like this repaint. It's like... I don't know, I like the colors. I like the metallic baby blue on it, uh, or turquoise, and it just fits. I might have to get this one. I also like the slug. I also like the slug colors. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I also might pick this up again. I have uh, like a couple of slugs. Uh, I like the fact that it comes in a box, and, which is pretty cool. Slash, don't really care about them. Never had any attachment to Slug, uh, both as a toy and even as a character. We never even got to see him as a character, so it's just not a very good looking toy, but it, it's a re repaint anyway, so not interested. Uh, moving on, let's look at the, uh, oh, more Deluxes. Um, there's a Deluxe Squeaks. I almost just want to get them just for the fact that it looks so unique. <laughs> Um, there's the Decepticon Berserker. We don't ha we don't see a box for it, but it is a Decepticon SUV. Uh, Drift is there as well as the as like some kind of Mercedes. I forgot what kind it is, um, but he's all red. Um, not too interested in Strafe. I just don't think he looks that good as a robot mode. Vehicle mode, pretty cool, but the ro robot mode doesn't do anything for me. Crosshair is really the same. Crosshair is there's nothing really changed about him except the paint job. Um, and is really, really evident on the, the hood of the vehicle. So uh, definitely not something that I'm that interested in. Uh, there's the uh, vehicle mode of Bumblebee, which we've already seen. And there's the Voyager class Optimus Prime. And I think if I were to get any Optimus Prime, it'd definitely be the leader class. Uh, moving on, uh, we got to look at the new characters. Or not so much new characters, but new molds. Okay, we're going to start from top to bottom. Okay, of, of course we've already seen, I just talked about the Masterpiece Bumblebee, but there is a, um, that's a, is that a leader class? Yeah, that's a leader class Megatron. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but there's the Hound, Voyager class Hound, Voyager class Scorn, really excited about that. Is that a deluxe class or a Voyager class? I can't really tell, um, but that is a new character. Um, and then there's a Voyager class Megatron. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about these characters. Hound looks really good. 
Hound looks even better than he does in the Age of Extinction version. In the Age of Extinction version, that was Hound, but it was like a, a different version of Hound, especially when compared to this. Like the original version of Hound, he was a uh, uh, like Oshkosh tactical defense vehicle, and he was a really, really bulky uh, robot mode. In this one, he's a little bit more refined, um, and I just love the sculpting on him. It's perfect. It's so proportional, and it looks really, really good, and he doesn't have those weird bullet rubbery arm like ar uh, bullet chain arms which is something that was kind of weird but this looks fantastic um there's this vehicle mode it's totally different it's not oshkosh tactical defense vehicle it's like a emergency response mercedes tactical vehicle um this is one of my favorite pieces the voyager class scorn which suggests that scorn is coming back heck all the original dinobots are back scorn uh um uh, uh, Grimlock, Slug, Strafe, and possibly even uh, Slash, hopefully. Uh, we'll see what he's like. But anyways, I freaking love this uh, this Voyager class Scorn. I love it so much. have to get that. Um, there he is as a, um, a, 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 a Dinobot mode. And this is way more accurate. Uh, to the uh, to the Age of Extinction, the way he looked in Age of Extinction, the the movie accuracy is all there because he's got the three sails as opposed to just one, and it looks so good. It's got a great Dinobot mode and a great robot mode, so really happy about that. Uh, moving on, we got uh, so I guess this is a um, deluxe class because it's so much shorter and smaller than the um, than Scorn and Hound. Um, this is a character apparently called Steelbane, and based on what you see here, not only is it a new character, but it's got um, uh, it's definitely a character in the medieval portion of Transformers Last Night. It's definitely a character that's going to be shown during those uh, medieval sequences because if you take a look at his robot mode, he's got that medieval looking armor. He's carrying a sword, and the those back pieces uh, there sh suggest that those are claws, which are pertaining to the fact that he's going to be a dragon. You see wings on the back, and he's got, like, just the chest armor and the waist armor. It just already shows that this is very medieval style. So it's it's a good-looking mold. I think it's a good-looking mold. The thing is that the lack of paint really bugs me. Like, it's, it's, you know, they could have painted it anything, and I understand why they went with light gray and silver and dark gray. It's just because during those times, there wasn't a whole lot of colors. It was really just a... Um, silver, like armor, armor colors. So it's all really, really dull, very um, like uh, earthy looking, I guess. Um, but it just was just not a very colorful um, time, I guess. So that's really unfortunate. But you know, that's something that a, uh, a repaint could fix, or you know, customizing. Uh, let's take a look at his uh, dinosaur or uh, his beast mode, and he's a dragon. So which tells us that there are going to be two dragons in the medieval sequence. The three-headed dragon, and then there's this one-headed dragon, which we now know as Steelbane. So I cannot tell if this is a Decepticon or an Autobot, like a good guy or a bad guy. I don't even know if they called them Autobots or Decepticons back in the medieval times. But it looks very tame to me. It doesn't look very evil-looking. Um, so I guess it's a good guy. I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about one of my favorite pieces presented at Toy Fair, Megatron. Um, this is, I believe, the, uh, could this be the Voyage? No, this is the, this is the leader class. With the amount of detail on it, I'm assuming this is the leader class. Yeah, I love the weathering on him. I love that this is a completely new um, mold, a new sculpt, and I love the weapons. Oh, there's so much I love about this. I don't even mind, the like, this color. I love it. I, I think it's really, really great. Now, here's a close-up of his his chest and once again you see all that detail there you got a Decepticon logo I love the weathering on him is essentially three different colors it's this dark gray light gray there's a little bit of yellow on him and then the red eyes so very very cool it's almost like three colors there's even a lighter gray so very very cool I love it look at the uh, the skirt armor um, once again more weathering there I guess it could use a little bit more paint on the legs. If you look in the the, the shins um, and the the kneecaps, 
I guess it could use a little bit more paint. I'm really curious what the Takara version is going to look like, but I'm still really liking this so far. There's the axe weapon that he carries. Um, we saw a very good look at it uh, when he was striking it down in the trailer. Uh, this is a... This suggests that it could be a blast or like a laser blast or a flamethrower. So I don't know yet, but it's cool that it comes with a piece like that. Now here's his jet mode. I love this jet mode. I've never liked any of the alt modes um, like as a toy uh, for any of the Transformers live action versions of Megatron. Um, Galvatron's alt mode was okay, but the toy itself wasn't great. But here is a version of Megatron where I actually like both the robot mode and the alt mode, which in this case is a jet. And the jet doesn't look organic like the um, like the, like the Revenge of the Fallen um, alt mode and the Transformers 2007 alt mode. They look really busy, really alien-like, really, really weird in design. And I was never really a fan of them. I, never, I don't mean that I don't like them. I just mean that it doesn't do anything for me. This impresses me. This is something that really shows me that they made some serious changes. Like they decided to step away from the weird, like, I guess, uh, like step away from the alien look, step away from the, um, like a Mad Max style truck, step away from a, a, a like a Freightliner Argo Z and just go full on like a, 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 almost like a human style jet, like a, like a real life jet. It's even got a cockpit. Who the hell sits in there? <laughs> it looks like it could be a jet that exists in real life. Uh, this is something very, very cool, and I really like it. Here's another shot of uh, Megatron, and um, I'm very, very happy with, with the way he looks. Very cool. Oh, man. I can't wait to get this. Okay. Uh, oh, here's the back. Here's the back of Megatron. It shows you the uh, Cybertronian markings, the, the alien tattoos, the glyphs. Uh, so um, that is great. I, I'm really, really happy with like what I'm seeing so far. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Dragon Storm. That is the official name for the three-headed dragon that we saw in the very first trailer of Transformers last night. Now, the, the, the um, uh, disappointing thing about this is that Dragon Storm, Storm, as far as we know, comes in a, um, well, we saw it in a, a Legion class, but then his only other class other than Legion class is a gimmicky line, and that is a turbo changer. It's a one-step transformation, which is kind of unfortunate, because I would have loved to play with it and try to find a way to transform it. Look at the box. Here it is. It's got, like, squeeze down, push down, activate, cyberfire, and, um... There he is as a box. Um, he's called Dragon Storm. Look at the artwork. He's, he's a very evil looking dragon that sprays or rather breathes fire. There he is as a robot mode. The robot mode is actually decent looking, um, but I'm not into gimmicky lines at all. It's not something that I'm interested in at all. He uses his tail as a weapon. The wings are out there um, and uh, it hides its heads quite well actually. Let's take a look at its alt mode or beast mode. There is Look! Look at the um, the body. It's very very boxy, and his um, there's his three heads, and um, it looks like everything just folds in, and it just looks very very boxy looking. Like it's just it's not that great looking. It, um, it's a gimmicky line. So what can you do? Now there's a close up of his head. Um, it's really just two colors. It's the dark, whatever that is, and the red. And uh, there you have it. I mean that's that's Dragon Storm for you. Hopefully. We can get another version of Dragon Storm. I would have loved to see him as as good as like Megatron or Scorn. Like those are two good looking molds, and uh, I'm just not um, interested in this gimmicky line. So, so we've talked about the gimmicky lines. We've talked about the main lines. Now I'm going to talk to you guys about what I do want to get based on these um, things. So I mean, based on these photos that we've seen so far. First of all, definitely getting that masterpiece Bumblebee. Must get. Okay. Next, um, I'm maybe on the leader class Optimus Prime. I'm a maybe on that. I definitely don't want the Shadow Spark Optimus Prime, but this is a maybe. I really like the silver parts. The silver parts really, really um, 
attract me. Um, I'm definitely getting that Megatron. I, I don't know if I'm getting Hasbro or Takara. I just have to find out what the, the updates on the paint job are for the Takara version, if at all. But I definitely want that mold. So he's a must get, okay? Especially since he's a new mold. As for these deluxes, definitely getting Hound, definitely getting Strafe, definitely getting Slug, Skipping Slash. Uh, no need to get another Bumblebee. As for these ones, I like the squeaks. I want to get him just because he's really unique. Decepticon Berserker, I guess I'll pick up. I'm skipping Drift because I think the, um, the the Bugatti version of Drift is much better. Uh, Crosshairs, I don't need. Voyager class, don't need uh, for Optimus Prime. Um, now, here's our, here are the good ones. I'm getting that uh, that leader class Megatron. I'm, uh, I'm definitely getting the Hound. I'm definitely getting that... Uh, that uh, scorn that is my favorite piece of them all to be completely honest um steel bane i'm iffy i guess it depends on what he's like as a character um if he's a really cool looking character a cool character in the movie i'll get him but right now the only thing that really uh doesn't attract me to him is the lack of paint it's just gray it's dull it doesn't just it doesn't look good the sculpt is good though it's just a lack of paint that doesn't do it for me um, let's see, Hound looks so good. What else do we have? Um, that's pretty much it. Um, Dragonstorm skipping. That is it. That is it. That's it for um, this episode of the Toy Fair coverage. Um, thank you to Sabertron.com and ToyArc.com for posting and sharing these photos. Um, th they're awesome and it really, really makes me want to spend some money. <laughs> so these toys are coming out in, in May of 2017 but the thing is that in other parts of the world they're already out which is crazy we've already seen photos of like of the of the toys already showing up on toy uh, toy store shelves and I'm just curious how in the world are they obtaining them apparently they're already out in other parts of the world so ugh, like when when how come we don't get to get them and by we I mean like North America and wherever else isn't getting them. Anyways, so that's all I got to say about the toys. Why don't you guys let me know on the comment section below which ones you are getting, okay? Now, before I take off, I just want to share with you a video um, about a positive cause from Jet Productions. Jet Productions, uh, Emily and Tom, they put up a video and they want to raise awareness about homelessness um, amongst young people. And this is a pretty important uh, thing that they're doing and an important uh, um, a topic, actually. So uh, this is um, something that they're doing to, um, well, it's actually a fundraiser to raise awareness for young homeless people. And what they're going to do is uh, spend a night um, out on the streets as a homeless young person or homeless young people and uh, experience it. And by doing that, they will raise awareness about uh, this, this, uh, this, you know, this, this, uh, situation that's going on right now. It's taking place in Derbyshire in the East Midlands of England. I'm going to link you to the video where she talks about it. And I'm also going to link you to the donation page uh, if you decide that you would like to donate and support this uh, this cause. This is a, uh, a positive cause for a change, a positive change. And it's something that, um, that uh, you know, we should support and if you can't support it, and if you're still deciding, and you, you don't know if you want to support it, then at least share it so that uh, you can bring more awareness about it. Because this is something that's going on, and it's something that uh, uh, people should know more about. Anyways, that's all I got to say in this episode. There's going to be more to talk about. Um, this is not all. I mean, Toy Fair is still going on, and I still have a lot more to talk about. And I would like to actually talk more about who are these new characters, Dragonstorm and Steelbane. We'll talk about that in the next episode, so stay tuned for that. And there you have it. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, Rage Nation. My name is Oxy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. That's happening, or that's going to be released next summer and they don't even have a director attached they can't grab michael bay